Everybody's looking at me, so I'll just go ahead and tap and call the meeting to order. Although we're a little early, um, before we do roll call, I was going to make a couple of comments. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to have a, a, a moment of silence for our, our board member that passed a few weeks ago, uh, Mr. Floyd Keels. If we may, if you just bow your head and pray, if you'd like. Thank you. Uh, I asked the board members if they'd like to make a comment or two about Floyd. It would be a good time. He was a great friend and a good board member and a friend and advisor to many people. He certainly was. I enjoyed getting to develop a relationship with Floyd. I didn't know him well until I came. he came on the board, but just to me an epitome of a gentleman, professional gentleman. and. I was thinking about him the other day. I never heard him make a negative comment about anything. He was always positive, always looking forward. Um, it was uh, my benefit to have a relationship with him, and I'll miss him. Anybody else? Well, when I first came on the board, he's one of the first people that approached me. And he was just, just easy always to be with. Mm -hmm. and had a kindness and humility to him, you know, just, I appreciated it. Yeah. I, uh, I talked with Floyd a lot about the book he was writing, and I, I think Chris Kennedy helped him a lot on, on that. And he was very excited and proud about what he was doing and uh, being able to capture his uh, background, which was very humble beginnings and you know the accomplishments he had in his career um, were just so um, impressive uh, and no one would have ever known if you would depended on him to tell you mm -hmm. but uh, I'm looking forward to reading the book mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman I might say a word or two on behalf of the University if I, Absolutely. If I might so I, I guess the one thing you would never have known about about Floyd was the fact that he was a true hero. He was a, he was a combat soldier. He fought in Vietnam. He was first sergeant. He won a Bronze Star with a with the Combat V. Like most folks that you expect, he never talked much about that. He just went on and lived his life and did good things. But the one thing you knew about about Floyd, there 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 was there was deep water there. There was there was a a, a settling a stillness to to Floyd. That was uh, that that spread to, to virtually everyone around him. The vice chair and I had the opportunity to work with him, in the Sanford administration, Governor Sanford appointed him to a a, a, a governmental reorganization commission, and and this won't this won't come as any great surprise to you, many people in this room, but. Governor Sanford complained that frequently he couldn't understand Mr. Keels. That Mr. Keels just seemed so calm and collected and never showed, <laughs> never emoted much. And, and the truth is he didn't. He just quietly, studiously got things done. One of the great joys I recall on this campus is watching Floyd walk across campus and stop and talk with groups of students as he moved across campus. He had a great love for first-generation college students, and he had a great love for our first-generation college fund because Floyd was a first-generation college student himself. This faculty and staff in this university absolutely lo loved Trustee Keels. He'll be deeply missed by us. Yeah. Well, thank you. Anybody else? Um, <clears throat> Hearing none, we'll move to uh, call the roll. And I would say that for the record, the meeting's been notified, and we're a little early, but uh, I suspect they'll be here shortly. Um, thank you. Quorum is present. <coughs> there we go. Joined. Dr. Dozier? Here. Mr. Freeman? Here. 
Mr. Gunn? Here. Ms. Harton? She's here. She's here. She's here. She answered. Mr. Yes. Jackson? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Ms. Leatherman? Here. Mr. Lee? Here. Mr. McIntyre? Here. Mr. Moore? Dr. Kelly? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> you have the minutes before you. I uh, hope you've reviewed them and looked at those over. They have a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, uh, the minutes stand approved. Move on to committee reports. Um, we met in executive affairs this afternoon. Uh, I think it was a very productive meeting, an expanded group. You know, a lot of people were in here today and uh, some discussion, no action was taken. I would mention that some of those issues will uh, be covered in the President's report. Moving on to academic affairs and accreditation, Ms. Leatherman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, academic Affairs and Accreditation Committee met this afternoon. Um, committee heard reports from the chair of the faculty enrollment management international program for library and academic units resolution 1523 to approve the bachelor of science in education multi-categorical special education autism studies pre-k through 12 was presented to the committee for approval we unanimously voted to approve the committee for approval of the entire board uh, we heard from the academic units about the research and scholarship being conducted. One of the highlights was Dr. Raz, computer science, Claremore and marketing, Kirshner and healthcare administration were awarded the 2023 Societal Impact Award from the Southern Welcome Business Join. from the Southern Business Administrative Association for their work with students in developing the Health Plus Me app, which provides all populations in South Carolina with health solutions that help those in rurally or medically underserved populations. International exchange programs continue to um, grow in, or rebound, I guess, after COVID. Um, COVID in uh, the spring of 2024, FMU um, will send 10 students abroad for the semester and receive six income and exchange students. These are from the UK, Germany, and France, our sister uni uh, um, universities. This fall, the university hosted delegations from three of our exchange partners. Two were from Germany and one from France. The Hugh and Jean Leatherman Travel Fund was established this fall. This fund will complement the Rachel Hodges and Hunter Britt funds to provide scholarships to students who are studying abroad. And finally, a reminder, there are two commencement ceremonies this fall. Um, School of Business and School of Health Sciences will be on Friday. 7 p.m. Friday the 15th at 7 p.m. and the College of Liberal Arts and School of Education will hold their ceremony Saturday December 16th at 10 a.m. and both will be at the University Center this year. That concludes my report Mr. Chairman. So so we do have the resolution that has to be voted on um, which um, resolution 1523 approving the Bachelor of Science in Education multicultural categorical special ed Autism Studies Pre-K through 12 at Francis Marion University serving the PD region in the state of South Carolina educationally. That came out of committee with um, unanimous consent. Trustee Leatherman recommended to have second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Hearing none, resolution stand approved. Moving on, um, let's see any questions for her. Um, moving on, development alumni, Trustee Freeman, your report, please. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we met just a little while ago. Um, just going to give you a quick overview of the Development Foundation report. Uh, one of the events for the for that particular sector, uh, we had a, they have a sporting clay tournament. I think it's going on today. They had over 13 teams, and actually one of the alumni who owns the uh, facilities hosted the event today. Uh, now, you all notice some socks that are sitting right here on your... Wait a minute. Did you go to the event? No. no. Oh, I was about to say, I didn't know. <laughs> I forgot to say that, sir. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I these like socks, you know, everybody usually have take socks and put them on the, on the Christmas, on your 
chimney there, fireplace there. Well, that is a, for an event that we're going to be having on Ju January 29th. It's called a Giving Day. So make sure you take all your money, you put it in your sock, and then bring it to that day. <laughs> uh, and for further information, you'll be giving, receiving that from uh, Dr. Laura Stan's office. Uh, Education Foundation, um, of course, as Mrs. Leatherman had talked about just a few minutes ago, that was an actual private gift that came from a million dollars uh, for the autism studies. Um, also, the Ridden Scholarship uh, support found uh, actual support uh, fin families with financial needs, and then also some track and field scholarships that was a support. And then also we had the Kirby Steen Foundation, and I think that has about approximately eight different uh, scholarships that it will support. On regional community affairs, uh, we have in the Steve Gately um, galleries that's currently going on now through December the second. Um, Performing Arts Center, January the 17th, they're going to have a state uh, ballet of the Ukraine presented by uh, presenting the Snow White. And on January the 25th, uh, we're going to have a group called The Rumors. It's a, a tri tribute to uh, the Fleet Mac. Uh, Center for the Child's maintaining uh, enrollment. Uh, local LGLI, the Local Government and Leadership Institution, session will be November the 2nd and November the 3rd. And then also, currently going on today and tomorrow, is the uh, Fred Shaheen Nonprofit Leadership Institution. Is um, I forgot the exact location that's going on currently at this time. And then for his alumni affairs, um, of course, several of you, uh, the majority of the board members was there last night, but uh, they had a, a lifetime membership. Uh, also rose last night there at the College Lab. That was very, very well attended by approximately 140 something people. Uh, it was really, really great. I don't think at about 7.45, all the oysters was eaten up already. <laughs> uh, then also on November 30th, they're going to have a senior toast. Before you leave that, uh, yes. how do you get a lifetime membership? A uh, lifetime membership, I think it's like $400. Right. I was about to say, it's a great buy. You can write a check and get a lifetime membership. Well, and, uh, not only that, sir, but you can also pay over time. Uh, you can do it annually. I think it's over two or three years, or maybe four years. So <coughs> then you also get your own card that says, hey, I'm a lifetime membership of uh, Friends Spring University. Mm -hmm. And of course, that money goes to the- Where's uh, Lee, the yeah. That's uh, a great buy, isn't it? It's a great buy, fantastic buy. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Stocking stuff. <laughs> In your sock. <laughs> um, the senior house, <coughs> what that is, that's actually, Graduating seniors that will be meeting on the 30th of November and also with alumni that corresponds. I think the last um, uh, meeting that they had uh, last year was actually attended by roughly 60 to 75 uh, students. And so we want that to continue to grow because we need those relationships. Uh, as I say, seniors need to, need to talk with alumni, especially for jobs at that time, getting ready to graduate in a couple of weeks. Um, they have had several different road shows. One was in Columbia. Uh, Rock Hill and in Greenville and approximately between 60 to 75 people at each one of those alumni receptions. I actually attended the one in Columbia. It was very, very uh, well put together and we're looking for having more, especially in the lower, uh, lower state. So if any of you all know anyone that wants to host the one or just let them know if more than five people want to get together, uh, contact Mr. Lee Daughtry. He'd be more than happy to, to facilitate that. Any questions? And no further ado, that's in my report. Sir. Thank you. Um, finance and facilities, Trustee Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We heard from uh, Dale Bridges and Ralph Davis, and uh, we reviewed the budget summary report, which is in your packet, and uh, the revenues and expenditures are at the projected levels for this time in the fiscal year. And also the, the financial assistance tab section of that report uh, reflects a downward trend in student loans, which is a good thing, and that results from the increased student aid packages, I mean student aid packages, including the South Carolina need-based grants and our commitment to institutional financial aid. So we're trying to make it easy, uh, easier for students, and I think uh, we're making progress, and uh, hopefully that'll be a continuing trend. The report, uh, the university audit report uh, was reviewed and uh, there were no issues and we have copies of that available for anyone who wants to take it <coughs> home and read it there in a box by the 
the door there. Also, we received uh, updates regarding construction projects, the Smith University Center renovations in the final stages um, with substantial completion and occupancy expected um, by November 30th, and we will be having graduation ceremonies there again. The School of Education, uh, School of Business building remains on schedule with the steel structure completed, the roofing underway, and both the interior and exterior walls being constructed. If you'll ride by there, if you haven't been, ride by there before you leave and you can see it. It's really impressive and uh, it's going to be a, a beautiful facility um, that's going to make us all proud. We also received reports regarding uh, projects including the Floyd Medical Consortium building, um, Circle Park the Forestry and Environmental Science Building, the Engineering Building, and uh, the Campus Entry Gates, and others. So um, Ralph Davis and his staff have been busy, and uh, they're keeping everything moving, and uh, we've got a lot going on, and we'll continue to see that progress, and uh, that concludes my report. Any questions? Hearing none, move on to uh, Student Life and Athletics, Trustee Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Student Life and Athletics Committee met this afternoon. We were joined by Dr. Chris Kennedy, Athletic Director Murray Hartzler, and our SGA President Devin, President Devin Campbell, who I think is here. Devin, are you here? I am here. Would you stand up, please? So Devin's our new SGA President. this correctly, Devin's a freshman and is, is that right, Devin? Uh, no, I, no, sir, I am a junior. A junior, I apologize. <laughs> Green, but you are from Greenville. I am a okay. <laughs> Welcome, Devin. We, we're glad you're here and we appreciate all the work you're doing. And I'm going to, and so Devin led off our meeting. I'm going to share a little bit with you about what he shared with us. And so um, I think like many organizations, Student Government Association kind of struggled through COVID, lost a lot of members and just really had a hard time beginning to sort of get their feet back on the ground, but I think that Devin's come in with a lot of excitement and energy. And so this year they've had 10 new senators sworn into office, so that sounds like a pretty, a pretty good start, and I feel confident that momentum will continue. Um, he next shared um, Resolution 101, and I'm kind of blown away by this. Let me share with you a little bit about it. Resolution 101, and this was obviously put forward by the, by the SGA, was voted on and passed through the Senate on October 26, 2023, and it affirms that Francis Marion University will be the first public institution in the state of South Carolina to offer free pharmaceuticals to those students, faculty, and staff of Francis Marion University who are South Carolinians with no form of health insurance. Francis Marion University will partner with a nonprofit organization out of Columbia known as Well Vista to fill prescription medications. So, and he says we're working on the details at this point to launch, launch that initiative soon. So I thought that was pretty amazing. Um, well done, uh, Devin. Uh, also, they're amending the Constitution for elections and seats. Um, uh, right now they have, let's see, they're amending the Constitution to have rolling admissions throughout the year for senators until the quota is met. The rolling admissions cap um, will, will cap when there's 20 out of 25 seats are filled leaving those other open five seats to any potential freshman as outlined in the Constitution and Code of Laws. And then they've got a busy slate for the spring uh, semester of 24, uh, Mental Health Awareness Week, Celebration of Pride in the LBGTQ community, working with the Patriots Fraternity Council for a Super Bowl party, Patriot Pride Student Organization March, homecoming events, voter registration drive, uh, Dunkin' Donuts, Campus Safety Talks with Campus Police, Student Appreciation Day, uh, that'll, that'll happen near Spring Finals, and then gearing up for late spring SGA election. So a lot of stuff happening with SGA. Thank you for that, Devin. That was a great report. Um, next, we heard again enthusiastically from Dr. Chris Kennedy, his enthusiasm around student life continues. Um, lots going on. The Campus Activities Board has been hosting a series of events for students this fall, including uh, the FMU's got talent show contest, bingo night, karaoke night, video game night, and paint and sip event. Um, Saturday, October 21st, had a great turnout for the FMU Founders Fall Festival event. Um, and that evening was also the sixth annual FM A Globe event. Um, continuing the food truck Thursdays, I think there were food trucks on campus today. I didn't see them, but I think they were here. Um, 
offering a once a month yoga class as well as a Latin dance class that have been well attended. I think dance class was last night. Did uh, is Chris here? Was that like, did I hear that right? Dan, like yes. dance was last night. Yes. Yes. Sounds like a big crowd. Uh, and also offering some co-curricular events with departments and student clubs that have been popular. And I think Dr. Kennedy said that our number of uh, student groups is up to 52 from 46 last year. So that, that sounds like a, a nice increase. So overall, an enthusiastic lineup of fun and educational events and activities for students this fall semester with great turnout being seen at all events thus far this semester. Um, real quickly on COVID, COVID numbers continue to be some of the lowest in the state among our sister institutions. Very few cases, active cases this year, so that's good news. Um, next we heard from our athletic director, Murray Harshler, around athletics. Um, so we had a pretty significant increase in our number of student athletes. Um, this year we had previously been at about 247 student athletes and those numbers have increased to 352. I don't know what that percentage is, but it's a pretty, pretty dramatic improvement. So uh, lots of excitement around having more student athletes. And he, he also indicated, as I think did Dr. Carter when he stepped in briefly, that they think those numbers will likely continue to go up to, I think the target number of student athletes for 24, 25 was somewhere in the range of 380. Um, so that was exciting news. Uh, wrapping up around sports, men's soccer won the East Division crown and finished as the number one seed for the conference tournament. Uh, the women's soccer team had a significant turnaround, finishing with the number three seed in the conference tournament. Uh, the, the volleyball play team plays tomorrow in Charleston in the quarterfinals of a conference tournament. Uh, both men's and women's basketball have opened up, obviously, uh, their, their playing games away from home as we finish up the work on the University Center. Um, men's basketball played poker last night. Uh, I, I looked at the score at halftime and we were down by 10 or 15. I think Dr. Carter said that uh, the, the men scored 70 points in the second half and came back and won that game. So. Never want to give up on Coach Jake at half. <laughs> he said that he, he saw um, Dr. Harder this morning, the Coker president. She looked a little glum, so I'm, I'm sure that would explain why. Uh, but again, the, again, the UC will be finished up soon. I think the first home game in the newly renovated University Center is scheduled for December the 18th. Uh, so that's going to be exciting. And then lastly, uh, Murray informed us that homecoming for next year will be February the 24th of 2024. So that's Two twenty-four twenty-four. <laughs> so y'all be sure to put that on your calendar. That concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Any questions? Hearing none, move on to the President's report. Mr. Chairman, we have two uh, faculty visitors with us today. The, if you recall, the board encouraged faculty to come out and, and join you from meeting to meeting. Benjamin Halib. Benjamin, would you stand up, please? Uh, assistant Professor of, of, of English, we're delighted to have him. And Dr. Jennifer Kelly, right behind me, Chairman of our Chemistry Department. Thank you for joining us today. So, you know, for for a long time, I've had to sit around this table listening to the Pike stuff go back and forth, okay? <laughs> I'm delighted to tell you that Devin's a teak. <laughs> um, let me say a word, too, about the Well Vista thing, okay? Because I know that goes, that goes to the heart of a number of us that have been working on this, not the least of which are student government um, officers. So Well Vista is a federally recognized Medicaid agency. And they, um, they uh, came to us during the course of the summer and said, we have an idea. We'd like to begin working with a college in South Carolina to make pharmaceuticals more available, free pharmaceuticals, free drugs more available to kids on campus who don't have any kind of insurance coverage. So I asked Devin to come over and meet with me, and, and I raised the issue, is this the kind of thing project that he thought student government could take on and and Devin was all over it in about 20 seconds and they've run with it and and hopefully soon after January Chris maybe January February time frame we'll be able to begin the process of having uh, many of our students who have no prescription coverage receive free prescription drugs from Well Vista and be able to continue in that program as long as they remain 
income eligible to receive those drugs. That's a big deal for us, and it's a big deal for Well Vista to cooperate with us. And as always, I'm especially proud that none of the other 13 universities in South Carolina are doing this. We are, though. Thank you, Devin, for doing that, for leading that effort. So, thank you for passing the autism program. This is, listen, this is a big deal. It's multidisciplinary, it's collaborative. We've got four different disciplines on campus coming together, making this work. It, there's an educational component, there's a therapeutic component. This is the kind of thing that is another signature opportunity for this university, but in a unique way to go out there and address an issue that just hasn't been adequately addressed in the state at all. And, I, and as you all know, I'm, I'm, I couldn't be more appreciative of our legislators for making this money available to us. $500,000 in the House, another $500,000 added to it in the Senate for a million recurring, which allows us to launch this program and then I think as we heard in, in the report from the, uh, from the Development Foundation, you know, the Browns came forward, Jimmy and Candace, and, and put a million dollar gift on the, on the table to fund autism scholarships. That's a pretty nice package to begin our autism efforts. And, and, uh, and again, I'm, I'm so proud of our faculty for bringing that together. You, you know, this is, this is, in many schools, this would have taken three years. At Francis Marion, it took about four months. So, thank you guys. So, everything's going smoothly at the university. We have, we've got John Rowan working feverishly to coordinate the recruitment efforts. We have Ralph Davis working feverishly to finish the construction projects. I don't know which one is displaying the most angst these days. It may be a competition between the two of them. Actually, I do. John doesn't have to deliver until the summer. Ralph has to deliver in, oh, about 15 days, okay? So, so we know the way that one's working out. Mr. Chairman, I will tell you that everything looks good financially for the university. Everything looks good with regard to the development of programs this year. I do want to stop and tell you how, how absolutely proud I am of my senior staff, how hard they work and how, how collaboratively they work together to get things done. I've had some great staffs during my 25 years at this university. I don't know that I've ever had a staff quite as good as this one, and I mean that. You guys do a great job. You do it every day, and I couldn't be more proud of you. So that brings me to one other item, and Mr. Chairman, I'll close on, actually I won't close on this item. I want to do one other thing first. I want to tell you who the commencement speakers will be. Friday night, the commencement speaker will be Senate President Thomas Alexander, and then the commencement speaker for Saturday morning will be Senator Katrina Sheely. So we'll have two members of the Senate uh, speak both both of whom are extraordinarily well respected around the state so we should have good commencement uh, speakers uh, finally um, mr. chairman what I would now like to do is ask the board to approve a two thousand dollar holiday bonus payment for all full-time faculty and staff both permanent and temporary at the university and that this, uh, this bonus be deposited in employee accounts by December 8, 2023, of course, allowing for all federal and state taxes to be withheld as a part of that, um, that contribution. So that's the, re the request going forward to the board, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Do I have a motion? I would like to make that motion. Trustee second. Jackson. Second. Hold up. Who, who seconded? Trustee uh, John. I'll yield to Dr. Uh, Coleman. Okay, <laughs> Trustee <laughs> Coleman. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any, aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion is passed uh, and is well deserved. And thank you for making that, Dr. Carter. Yes, sir. Um, it's also within our budget. Anybody has a question about that? We built that in. So, uh, unfinished business. We don't really have any unfinished business. New business, one item that I 
I told you during executive session I would think about it, I thought about it and um, we do have the the vacancy which is an important vacancy on the the officers the secretary and I just don't think um, we can wait so I'm asked uh, Mr. Lee to form a nominating committee and ask Jody Bryson and Trustee Karen Leatherman to serve and to bring us back some recommendations by the next board meeting. And um, that's it. Any other business? We have no need for executive session. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Meetings adjourned. Thank you. you <laughs>